morning. It's Tuesday. September 24th, 2024. I'm Larissa. The time has come to drink from skulls. Oh, yeah, it's that time. It's that time. Can you see that over there? Can you see it? Wait, wait, wait. There it is. You see it? What is it? A cocoon? See it hanging there? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my big, fat, ugly face. Look at my face. Uh, my old lady lips. Look at those. Uh. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, the cocoon over there. That moth. Husk of a moth. The spider's up above it, looking down at it. She's like, oh, that was a tasty moth. Tasty, tasty moth. Mmm. Moth soup. I'm gonna make a pot of soup today, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, the news are talking about people having a heat wave and all oh, it's so hot. Well, it wasn't hot here. They were saying it was supposed to be hot here. It wasn't hot here yesterday. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it's too hot for me to make a pot of soup. I got stuff to make a pot of soup. White bean and mustard green soup. Yeah. Still got a whole bunch of that pepper sauce. I'm gonna have to, like, freeze it. Last night, last night, um... I made leftover sandwiches. <laughs> the sandwiches weren't left over. Weren't left over. I used leftovers to make sandwiches. So Omar had kielbasa on his sandwich, and pepper pepper sauce, which is now thickened up, so it's like pepper spread. And then I put some camembert cheese on that, and then I cut up some of the mushrooms that were left over. So I had mushroom, kielbasa, pepper, and cheese sandwich, toasted in the toaster oven. That's what he had for dinner. I didn't have kielbasa on mine. Mine was exactly the same. But instead of kielbasa on mine, I put tempeh. Tempeh bacon. It's not bacon at all. It's just some moldy beans. Literally, that's what tempeh is. It's moldy beans. <laughs> I had me a moldy bean sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God, I had a dream last night. Crazy dream. It's one like, like one I've never had before. It's like, Larissa, all your dreams are like nothing you've ever had before. No, that's not totally true. Although it is true that I haven't had any of the the um, episodic dreams. And what do I mean by episodic? I mean, they're like episodes. It's like the same show, like in the same place, but they're different. You know, I haven't had any of those dreams in a while. I'd say probably about eight months, eight, nine months since I've had any of my re repeating scenario dreams right anyway stream last night stream last night i was in a dugout right i was in this dugout and there was a big old baseball game happening right and the weird thing was the pitcher that was out on the mound was dante di vincenzo and he is not a baseball player but he was out there pitching and i was Back in the dugout, it was all dark in the dugout, and the, the lights were, sh you know, the light was, the sunshine was all real bright through the, through the holes of the windows of the dugout, and I'm standing at, 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 I'm, you know, like, like if you're in the hole, right, I was like standing in the hole, watching, and, um, then I went out, and I don't know if I was, if I was catcher or what, it's like, cause I was like, I was like standing like I was in the hole, like I was, like I was gonna be up to bat soon, and, then, um, then, then everybody switched and I was like, I was behind home plate. So I don't know if I was playing catcher, I was playing catcher and I was like talking to people and, and, oh, when I was in middle school, I dated this boy, Robbie Hanley, who played baseball and he, he, he played, he was, he was on, he played varsity in high school then, um, and his sister was on my softball team. Anyway, Shannon Hanley. She was like, she was a bruiser. He was a skinny little like twig. And she was a, she was, I mean, she wasn't fat, but she was, she was kind of a horsey girl. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Like if they were fighting at home, I'm sure she sat on him and hit him. Anyway. Anyway. Like he, he like. He was up to bat, like he was on the other team or something, and 
Oh, it was just, it was just weird. It was just weird. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was playing catcher. I didn't have, I, I can't, I don't feel like I had a, had a mitt on or anything. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know if I was coaching, coaching third base or what I was doing. I, I don't know. I don't know if I was talking to all these guys and watching them, watching them hit. I don't know. And there was a game going on. There was like nobody in the stands. Bright, sunny day. Yeah. And I see a story like the A's are leaving Oakland. Everybody's leaving Oakland. It's all been planned. Like, everybody's acting like, oh my God, it's so terrible. What happened to Oakland? Blah, 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 blah. This was all orchestrated. This was, this was all. So the Port of Oakland is a big mess. And it used to be like Alameda used to be a big military base, right? There used to be a weapons depot there, right? And they moved that. There were a bunch of old ammunition depots um, along the California coast that were closed and moved. And there used to be a military base there um, in Alameda at the, at the Port of Oakland. And there's still some uh, buildings that are used for housing, at least there were when we were still living back there. But a lot of them, like there's trees growing up through them and everything. Like it's a big, it's a big friggin' mess. It's a big waste of space, right? Well, it's it's the biggest that 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 oceanfront there is the biggest considered the biggest developable real estate on the West Coast, like the entire West Coast, U.S. West Coast, not including Alaska. So they've been moving stuff out of Oakland, right? Um, slowly, and one of the first things that went was the ammunition depot. And I remember when they were moving all all of those weapons, they moved them out in the middle of the night. We were living we were living in in that loft that was right there on the on the train tracks, and there are all these like for like two weeks, all these big unmarked gray containers that were that they only that they only moved at night. Now the train it wasn't unusual that trains came through at night. But um, usually it was like late and then they'd park or whatever. These were moving through and I couldn't sleep because it was loud. And the windows were the, you know, the original windows to the mill. It's not like they were double paned or anything. And so when they would come through, it would kind of shake the building. Now they didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't toot their horns or anything when the, when the trains came through, but I could feel it, the reverberation and all that. Like if you were on the bottom two floors, you were kind of shielded because there was a big brick wall that, that was built between it was a sound barrier between between the building and, and the tracks. But up on the fourth floor, no, that was like the sound the sound traveled up there and and it it would shake, right? Like the top of the building would shake. I'm guessing the third floor wasn't as bad because it would have had stabilization of the bottom floors, right? To absorb. But the if you were on when you were on the top floor, it it could be it was loud. And so it was like, you know, a freight train coming through your fucking bedroom. At least it's my bedroom it was. Because we were right on the corner. We were on the corner unit. So when the train would come through, it was like that reverberation. When it was when the sound was traveling, it hit the top corner of the building and it would shake our bedroom. So it was hard for me to sleep when those trains were coming through. And so I'd sit up and watch them. And if you were sitting outside, you didn't see them, right? Because the big wall and everything, you couldn't see over the wall. But if I sat up in my living room and watched out the window, I could watch these trains come in. And they were all these big industrial gray, unmarked, no markings at all, none, right? And around that time, and, and there was, and there was like security. There'd be, there were guys dressed in black that were down there when those trains were coming through. And, um, then there were a bunch of, there were a bunch of crimes and things there were, there was a murder that was down there around that time. There was a guy on the tracks the one morning I looked down like, Oh my God, there's somebody laying on the tracks. And I got out my binoculars and looked cause it, it looked, you could, I could see from where I was that there was something messy, but I looked down there and he had a big hole through his face. It was laying, it was laying face up right on the track and he wasn't smushed, but he had a big hole through his one eye. And, um, called the police and, and they, they were there real fast. I mean, at least somebody else had, had already called, went down and asked them what happened. I said, Oh, somebody got hit by the train. I'm like, that's a strange way to look if you got hit by a train. So I don't know. 
It was an Asian guy. looked like an Asian guy. He was wearing a mechanics outfit. Blue mechanics jumpsuit. Yeah. You know, work boots. I think he got shot and was left on the tracks to make it look like he'd been hit. Like they were hoping the train would come through and run over him. But he was shot. He was definitely shot in the face. Hmm. Anyway, so they moved the, the munitions um, depot out of out of Alameda. And then, you know, they moved the warriors out of Alameda. And they moved the raiders out. Or they, first they moved the raiders out of Oakland. Then they moved... They moved the Warriors out of Oakland. Now they're moving the A's out of Oakland. And I think they're going to um, uh, level some stuff. Hmm? It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. But but it's like they brought in all this money from Chicago. Um, people started renting. There's all these people came in from Chicago. So it's kind of interesting to me that, you know, we're seeing now stories out of Chicago. People in Chicago are like, oh my God, they're sending Venezuelans up here. I'm like, oh my God, they sent Chicago people out, out to Oakland. And everybody's been crying about that. You know, it's just like, well, they've, they've been saying, oh my God, these are Chicago people. They're saying, oh my God, the crime's so much worse. And it's like, well, that's why. That's why. Mm, that's why. And created this big vacuum. It's like this big <laughs> swirl of shipping around people who are unsavory all over the United States, all over the world, all over the place. You know, and they see video. They see see the news clips with Noel Gallo. Noel Gallo has been there forever. That 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 man, like, and the stuff. I'm sure the stuff with the sideshows are really, really close, near and dear to him because his because of what happened with his daughter. Um, not a sideshow, but it was that was a car accident. And so I'm sure that that just like really is hard for him, watching, like worrying about other people's kids because he and his wife genuinely care about people's families and. That's why I didn't mind when, when we lived in Oakland, we were living over there in that neighborhood, right? Um, I didn't mind doing stuff with him. Like, cause I, cause I, I understood, I, I, I understood where, where he was coming from and he got taken advantage of a lot because like any group that wanted a, that wanted a foothold on it in that neighborhood would come over and say, Oh, we're going to help you out and all. Like, I didn't have lots of money and friends and backing and stuff, so it's not like I had anything to offer him other than my, other than the labor of my hands, you know, and I did go out with him and his neighborhood cleanups because people used to come over and dump trash in that neighborhood all the time. Anybody that was doing construction anywhere would come over and dump their construction trash in that neighborhood, all right? And there were piles of garbage everywhere. So, like, I'd go out with him and, and, and help with that, but, I mean, that was just, like, one person, right? Like I didn't have friends or nothing. And anytime I anytime I did organize anything, like the Earth Day cleanup, oh my God. The woman Allison Walton, she comes out, she should act like you're in charge. I said, Well, actually over at this site I am. Because I'm the one that signed the papers with the city. This is my this is my site. And she she's like Cause she 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 just she was a horrible, horrible little troll of a person, Allison Walton with her float gallery her chain smoking cigarettes and her cheap beer and then trying to sell people relaxation and, 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 and well health and well being in her, in her float, in her, in her, her floating chamber. I'm like, Oh my God, I would never trust you. No, you are not going to lock me in a capsule of water in your place. I don't trust you, bitch. Not, I don't trust you one bit. <laughs> she was horrible. Little mullet wearing wife beating tank top little troll she was awful yeah like you're in charge i'm like well did you sign the papers with the city no you did not you know, i was like i have to return these tools <laughs> she was awful she was an awful 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 little thing so like the city you know you see oh nothing ever changes like nothing ever changes because every because people who have lived there like it's such uh, People who live who live there have such a chip on their shoulder, right? When when anybody, if I had had money to flash, if I had had money to flash, then 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 it would it, everything you know things would have been different. But I didn't. So the people that impress them, right, are thugs, and then they complain about. There being crime, it's like, well, you know, I didn't have the money, 
but you know, I, I, I was, and I'm not the only one. There's, there's, there's other people like me, right. Who, who left the city because we weren't good enough, right. We weren't cool enough or whatever, whatever it was. Didn't have, didn't have the money, didn't have the money. Well, you know, they went with people who had the money. People who had the money were all, cr all criminals. So, hmm. but I feel bad for Noel. I feel bad for him. He's out there in his reflector vest, <laughs> in Fruitvale in Jingletown, picking up other people's trash and telling them to keep their kids at home. So those sideshows, those sideshows did not hap did, did not start happening until after Drysbeck uh, rented out the handy building. Hmm. Those fires in Alameda and on that side of town didn't happen until after Drysbeck rented out the Andy building. Hmm. So go figure. Go figure. Doesn't take doesn't take anybody too smart to figure out what happened there, huh? No. No, no, it does not. No, it does not. Mm -mm. Yeah. And so the stuff about Elon Musk and his ugly fucking dumpster trucks. So I guess the Russian military bought a bunch of them. Oh, good for you, Elon. Look at you. Look at you wheeling and dealing. And then there's a story. Then there's some story about, oh, some guy in Russia mounted a mounted a, a, a machine gun to the top of his cyber truck. So Elon Musk turned it off remotely. Ooh, Elon, aren't you a hero now? Hmm. What a slime ball. You know, what does that say? Somebody's going to buy your product, but the, but the person who made it still has has some sort of control over it that they can turn it off remotely. Like all of that, the John Deere stuff and all that. How how does that work? You sell somebody something, but you still own it, right? Once you buy something like that from somebody, once you buy an auto, a vehicle from somebody, you should be able to like turn it into whatever you want. I'm not saying I think it's, you know, I'm not saying I approve of mounting uh, machine guns to dumpster trucks and shooting people up. Certainly not. I don't. I don't approve of buying those dumpster trucks. Those are the ugliest thing on the road. Elon has zero creative artistic sensibilities. His aesthetic is like trash. Literally, those trucks look like dumpsters. They look like dumpsters on friggin' wheels. Those are the ugliest waste of metal I've ever seen. Anyway. So. And all this stuff with the Haitians. Oh my gosh. The Haitians and the Venezuelans. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh. Those Venezuelans, they're going to start going after people with solar panels and be like, you, you fucked our country over. <laughs> right? Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's not funny. None of it is. Ugh. But it's like, okay, so Texas is shipping these people all over the United States. So Texas is purposely spreading a problem. Right? Wow. Wow. Kind of reminds me of like uh, in the 80s and early 90s when people were angry they had AIDS and were purposely giving it to people. Mm. That's what Texas reminds me of with their fucking shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. So like an angry gay man with AIDS in the late 80s, early 90s, screwing people indiscriminately just because they're bitter. That's what Texas reminds me of right now. With the immigration shenanigans. Yeah. Anyway.
Are we really happy with this lonely game we play? Searching for the right words to say. Searching but not finding, understanding anyway. We're lost in this masquerade. Both afraid to say we're just too far away. From being close together from the start. We try to talk it over, but the words got in the way. We're lost inside this lonely game we play. Thoughts of leaving disappear each time I see your eyes. And no matter how hard I try to understand the reason why we carry on this way we're lost in this masquerade hmm. yeah oh my god it's all crazy it's all so crazy it is crazy 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 Politics in the U.S. are crazy, crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I'm going to go be nice to me today. Right? Go be nice to me. Go do some things be nice to me. See how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make faces. Make faces at you. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for Omar right now. He's having a rough time. I don't know what to do. Um, stay out of his way. Not giving problems. <laughs> Story of my life, right? Make sure the laundry's done. Make sure dinner's made. Yeah, so white bean and mustard green soup tonight. I got leftover spaghetti squash from the other night. I'm gonna mix that up with some with some uh, with some cornmeal. Make some some cornmeal some cornbread squash or some squash uh yeah some some squash corn cake cornbread muffins put those in the put those in the freezer then and then pop them in the toaster oven for breakfast um make a bunch of those and i don't know make some hard boiled eggs and then you can just pop one of those muffins in the toaster oven and have that with a hard boiled egg yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Get up here and do that. I guess. After I put away the clean towels. Clean towels need put away. Or I'll have a washcloth in the bathroom. Don't be scrubbing yourself with the bar of soap. It always leaves little curlies on the soap. And I don't like having to pick, pick curlies off the soap, even if I know where those curlies came from. <laughs> I don't be rubbing anybody's curlies all over me. No, I don't. Don't be scrubbing yourself it's like somebody else's curlies. <laughs> I don't want to scrub myself with my own curlies. Jeez. Cheese on rice. Cheese on pizza. <laughs> Cheesy potatoes. <laughs> oh, I had me a baked potato yesterday for for brunch. 
after after hot yoga, when I before I left to go over to hot yoga, I put a I wrapped a potato and a and a shallot in a piece of tin foil and uh, put some salt and oil on it, wrapped it up, stuck it in the toaster oven, baked it, and then when I got out of hot yoga, I had me a baked potato. Yes, I just cut that thing up. And then I put a little cheese on it, and that's what I had for lunch. Well, and I came home and I had some carrot sticks, too. And then we had leftover sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Detroit Grand Poobahs. <laughs> no, I did not have me snow poobah sandwiches. No, you can be the bun. And I can be the burger girl. <laughs> that song is awful. Come on, we can do it. <laughs> we can make sandwiches. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Dr. Booty Grabber. Whatever. Whatever. Mm. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. People are crazy. Yep. Yeah, people are crazy. They really are. <laughs>